Hey everyone, Joe Axman here again. And in this video, I want to talk about God, religion, and spirituality. <clears throat> and uh, I want you to take this as um, uh, something that is um, curious and questionable and interesting, not as anything, nothing I say should be taken as dogma or not that anyone would. But, um, you know, I don't take it that way, right? This is an ongoing process for me. I'm not saying that's the way it is. I have the truth. Anything like that. That's not my orientation to any of this. It's all about discovery and learning. And uh, so with that, let's jump right in. Uh, my definition, what is God? What is God? Let's start there. What is God? Well, that's not really something that I can directly say what it, God is. I can only talk about what God is not. And I can only say that any concrete descriptions of God are probably not very accurate. Right. And uh, also the question is more important than the answer. Uh, what is God? Because it, ultimately it's a realization for the individual, not an intellectual concept. So whatever intellectual concept that you have. It's not very important, not very good. Probably just drop it. I mean, just to be to be to be nice about it. If I wasn't being nice about it, I would say definitely drop it, you know, like but I'm trying to be, you know, being friendly here. Um no definitions really necessary. Um if if anyone, I mean, sometimes religious fundamentalists will say stuff like, God is not this, and God is not that, and God is not that, and God, God is you know, opening the Bible and praising Jesus or, or whatever, you know, like, or it could be, you know, is the Islamic version or the Jewish version or the Hindu version, whatever version of that. I'm just, you know, I'm a Westerner. So that's the Christianity is the most common thing, you know, even though I'm not Christian and I, I come from Judaism, but I'm not religious. So I don't, in any case, um, you know, just saying I'm not picking on Christianity um fundamental religious fundamentalism is all the same uh so yeah god is not limited to anything in fact you know god re can't really be god unless god is everything right unless we're all god so you, so you know i reject this idea that um you know christ is the son of god and he's the only one we're all and we're all less and, and all less than that like no that's not true that can't be true because God is there. God in order to be God has to be everything. God is not a limited thing. And that's myopic. That's a very this confused orientation that God is this and, and it's not that. And you know, it's limited. And God is not a being. It's not a male. It's not a he. It's not a she. It's not an it. It's not a person. God doesn't have a brain. Uh, we have brains. God has uh God is the consciousness that runs through all of us, right? You know, if we take all the things away that are conditioned and imposed upon us and we're just pure consciousness, well, that is God, right? And they say, if you if if you look for God or I, I was searching for God and I found myself or I was searching for myself and I found God, of course, it's the same thing. We're all God. God is God lives through all of us. And this is all God's experience, right? And that leads me to the another point i don't really have a defined um agenda for this whole thing other than loosely talking about god i'm kind of a um abstract painter when it comes to these kinds of things um just going with the flow um you know people will say oh how could god allow so much suffering on this planet what well, if god is living through all of us and god is all things then why would he not want to experience suffering he, I call it he, just for, I, okay, so whatever, it. Why would God not want to, he, she, it. Why would God not want to experience suffering? Why would God not want to experience all things? That's the whole point behind free will. Of course, it's not really free will, because that implies an individual I, an, an individual self, and there is no individual self when you come down to it. It's just an appearance of individual self, right? And that's why the whole thing with, like, Jesus is the only son of God. That doesn't make sense when you realize that there is no individual self. So Jesus, when he, when Jesus talking about himself, even if he did talk that way, which I'll get to about I'm the way and I'm this and that, he's not talking about his individuality. 
He's talking about his the the universal essence, essence which is consciousness, which is running through all of us equally, uh, unavoidably equally, without any chance for higher or lower. You know, there's no like higher consciousness. It's all consciousness, right? There's there's un, there's uh, sleep consciousness and awake consciousness and in between consciousness, fear consciousness, and it's all of its derivatives. Yeah, but consciousness is still one when it comes down when it comes down to it and and a figure like jesus christ definitely knew that yeshua however you want to call him doesn't really matter names are names right and god has infinite names right so you know this idea that uh some people struggle like that how can i believe in a god with all this suffering well god wants to experience suffering that's why i mean god is huge god is i mean there's not it's not a huge thing it's not a size thing because god is everything god is infinite right so it's not like god is bigger than us god is i mean of course god is but i mean it's not even it's it's infinite it's versus it's something finite versus something infinite it's like is the infinite bigger than you know you know me 510 yeah i mean it's like not even a real question it you know so yeah god wants to experience everything Okay, God wants to experience suffering. God wants because it's all a game. It's all fun. It's all a choice. And some people might not like this idea that it's a choice. But I'll tell you when you you realize it's a choice when you've been chasing enlightenment, and then you realize that um, enlightenment means your own um, dissolution. You know, your own um, death, essentially, your own complete um, uh, ending extinction extinguish your extinction of your of the ego of the self of the individual self and when you realize that really realize that and you see that and you're like no wait a minute hold on hold on hold on uh i think maybe i'm not done living out this individual sort of fantasy this game this dream this maya this illusion i want to keep playing this game and then you're like oh snap i caught myself it was all a game it was all a choice it was all a ride, right? And I chose it all along and I wanted to be here all along. And the proof is that I could end it and I didn't want to, right? I could have gone. I could have made the decision. I could have kept going. And I, I do, we do, we all do, right? But um, it's like versus like, you know, like rushing ahead willingly or just being like, hold on, let's, let's enjoy the ride, you know, like let's slow down. I chose this for a reason. I wanted to be here for a reason. None of it's bad. None of it's really awful. Yeah, there's pain and suffering, but that's a part of it. That's that is an essential part of it, an integral part of it. That's what we learn. That's how we grow, right? And if you ask yourself, do you do you really want to be uh, fully one with God? If you really wanted to be one with God, you would be. And I'm telling you, if you if you're not one with God yet, if you haven't fully enlightened and awakened, awakened to your Christ consciousness, it's because you don't want to right? If you wanted to, you would. You would be Christ. You would be Buddha. But you don't want to. So you're not. And that's the harsh reality when it comes down to spirituality is that we're all choosing this. And we're here for a reason because we want to experience. We want to learn and we want to grow. And we're immersed in this fantasy, this illusion, because if we were really clear, none of it would work. None of it, we wouldn't be able to have all this delusion, all this game playing, all this winning and losing and suffering right? None of it would make any sense. You would just be like, you know, shoe fly, don't bother me, right? It, it would just be peace and serenity and contentment, and then we'd die, and we wouldn't be reborn, and that would be it. We'd be one with the universe. We'd be God, essentially, and that would be it. So we all choose this, right? So th this whole idea of suffering, like, well, how could a God allow that? It's, it's nonsense, God wants to, to just, just the choice. Like this is God choosing to be immersed in, in illusion. How else could God be, a, a, you know, have this game? Nothing would make any sense. If God all knowing would just be able to understand everything and it wouldn't make it, it would no, not be any, any, any movement. Everyone would just be perfectly content to do nothing and die. Right? <laughs> this would be like ultimate bliss and peace without anyone fighting without any conflict without any struggle there wouldn't even need to be any technology because everyone would just be like sitting there in absolute you know harmony with the whole universe and, and that's it you know it would be boring 
but God wants some excitement. So he spices it up. So he makes himself forget. That's, that's why we're all here. We're choosing. It's all a choice. All Even the suffering. And the suffering helps us evolve and remember, oh yeah, I remember I was God. And then I chose to not be God or give the have the illusion that I was not God anymore, that I was an individual separate from God. Oh yeah, I remember. I, I, I remember now. Remember. I remember that I'm I'm God in my essence. Of course we are. I mean, the universe is infinite. The universe is infinite. How can we not be God? Right? You think about it. Like, get in touch with that. Of course. Of course, like, the, the ego wants to say, no, not me, not me. I, I, I'm, I'm a sinner. Jesus was perfect. Buddha was perfect. Christ was perfect. Allah was perfect. Muhammad was perfect. And I'm, I'm a lowly sinner. But that's an illusion. That's an ego illusion. That's an ego excuse to, to be able to feel better for sinning. Like you just, you want to, you know, have sex and drink alcohol and, you know, eat, eat pizza and cookies and ice cream and just be like, I'm a sinner. I'm not, I'm not Christ. Like that's the next cheap excuse. Like you can do that, but you don't have to lie to yourself about being this imperfect sinner because that's what I'm saying is that people like to think that it, the lie is that that's somehow humble, right? That I'm, I'm, um, I'm not good enough, right? But that's an ego lie. That's just to say, stay small and keep indulging in all this lowly stuff and keep yourself from evolving. But the real truth is that we are one with the infinite. We're not gods, like some people say. We're go we're all gods. No, because that's the ego. The individual me there is no individual me we are in essence one consciousness which itself is god because it's because it's all there is right it's it's we're living we're swimming we are an ocean of oneness which is consciousness right and that is god and i mean that's just the truth and you know it's not about being humble or being arrogant or anything like that it's just it's just recognizing the truth right and it's a this false humility that keeps us oh no, Jesus was perfect. Christ was perfect. Buddha was perfect. I'm, I'm lowly. I'm a nobody. Like that's arrogant. That's really arrogant and ignorant. And, and it just keeps, keeps people in this, this confused, low vibrational state where they can sin and, or, you know, sin is another word for creating negative karma for yourself. You know, they have karma in the East, sin in the West. So same thing. Right? You're creating negative karma for yourself. I'm not good enough. I'm just a lowly nobody. Therefore, I keep sinning because I can't do any better than that. That's as good as I'll ever be. You know, I'm a lowly sinner. It's nonsense. It's arrogant nonsense. Okay. Let me share my screen. Um, I have a few things that I picked out on the internet. Um, sorry, not this. Okay. Uh, sorry okay first of all um i've seen this floating around on on facebook social media um before they died muhammad said i don't know the purpose of life buddha said speak for the truth confucius said i'm not in the way first of all i mean this is such an inaccurate way of summing up their teachings because their teachings are voluminous you know all, all of them they, they wrote and said, well, they didn't write, they said like tons of stuff. And here it's like, it's cherry picking. I mean, this is an obvious, you know, ridiculous meme, but it's there nonetheless. And some people think it's valid or proves this something. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to me. Uh, no one comes to the father except through me. Okay. Wow. Okay. So he was the only one who ever said, all right. Um, how do you, how do you figure this? This is not in the the christian religion because this is all religion what we're talking about we usually when people talk about god and christ or 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 god and whatever you know buddha they're they're coming from a very religious mindset this is not part of any religion by the way this comes from the nag hammadi library they found this text in a cave going all the way back to biblical times but the christian christian religion no religion will ever take something like this a text like this and say yes this is part of our religion because religion is always all about power and control it has nothing to do with the truth right not to not to say that there are not people who go through the religious uh order of things and arrive at the truth there are there are those christian mystics jewish mystics uh 
Muslim mystics, Sufi mystics, you know, Buddha, Buddhist, Hindu mystics. There are, they go through it. They really are um, awake and enlightened. But the, the, the intent by the, the structure is not to raise people up and lift them up. It's just power and authority, right? Religion really is very low. I hate to break it to you if you're, that's news to you, but probably if you're listening to this, you already know that religion is not something that is very evolved. Um, this is so. This is a a a an enlighten a text of enlightenment, a truly highly evolved text, and it's not written by the Christ. It's written by a woman, right? So. My point of sharing this is is that it contrasts that that's ridiculous meme, which is very obviously ridiculous. But I was sent. I'm just going to read something. I was sent forth from the power, and I've come to those who reflect upon me, and I have been found among those who seek after me. Look upon me, you who reflect upon me, and you hearers, hear me. You who are waiting for me, take me to yourselves, and do not banish me from your sight, and do not make your voice hate me, nor your hearing. Do not be ignorant of me anywhere or any time. Be on your guard. Do not be ignorant of me. So who's he talking about? He's talking about, you know, is he talking about this person? Is this person talking about themselves as an individual? Or is it more talking about the I am essence, right? The me, the consciousness, the God that is in all of us, right? Let's go on. For I am the first and the last. I am the honored one and the scorned one. I am the whore and the holy one. I am the wife and the virgin. I am the mother and the daughter. I am the member of my mother. I am the barren one, and many are her sons. I am she whose wedding is great, and I have not taken a husband. I am the midwife, and she who do, does not bear. I am the solace of my labor pains. I am the bride and the bridegroom, and it is my husband who begot me. And I am the mother of my father, and the sister of my husband, and he is my offspring. I am the slave of him who prepared me. I am the ruler of my offspring. But he is the one who begot me before the time on, on a birthday. And he is my offspring in due time. And my powers are is from him. I am the staff of his power in his youth. And he is the rod of my old age. And whatever he wills happens to me. I am the silence that is incomprehensible. And the idea whose remembrance is frequent. I am the voice whose sound is manifold. And the word whose appearance is multiple. I am the utterance of my name. So what's the point of describing all these things? Like I'm this, I am that. Um, what this author is saying is that they recognize, they realize, uh, they embody that God is not separate from uh, who we are, right? It's that the oneness, the God is as I am, right? Uh I'm the mother of my father and the sister of my husband, and he is my offspring. He. So he, when when it, when this author says he, it's referring to God as the idea of something separate, but that the, this idea of something separate is not separate. It is the one. It is all the same. I, I. So in other words, the self, the other, and the communication between the two are all one, right? And when we look at the world through that, that view, Everything is God, right? The communication that's happening, blah, 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 right? Myself, the self, because we all have self. We all recognize that self exists, self, which is the center. It's a conscious center, communication, and then other. And then from that, we have everything, self, other, and communication. And all three are, in essence, God. And that's my, that's what I'm telling. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. It goes on. It's very powerful, but it's basically saying what Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's the same tone, do you understand, is what I'm getting at. So this person, this meme tries to say that only Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, but none of the, none of the others say. And I just pulled up a text that the Christian religion will not acknowledge, but it's saying the same thing. And this is another person. This is a woman. So how is this? Oh, Christ is the only son of God? No. We're all the sons and daughters of God, right? Because we can all recognize this, that God is universal. God is infinite. And God is in us. And this life force, this miracle, magical life force, this consciousness is, in essence, God. God is everywhere. God is everything. God is communication. God is self. God is other. It's all God, right? God is pain. God is love. God is beauty. God is joy. 
it's, and this is it's just all talking about that it's saying the same thing and go read the whole thing for yourself and dwell on it right it's you know people make people are like well i read the bible and i just know it's the word of god i just know well all right you know separate from your cultural conditioning you know you were born into a culture and you're just like oh i just happened to win the lottery i was born into the one culture and the whole entire infinite universe that has the truth and nobody else has the truth just the culture i was born in. i mean that's so egotistical and arrogant right you know try and step out your side yourself for once and not talking anyone sp specific because probably if you're listening you already know this but um like go read something like this and realize this is as powerful as any verse in the bible which by the way people think that um the bible is just like the, the compiled word of god but how is it that all these other books that were uh written around the same time in the same place um were were uh not part of the bible because the bible is a compilation of books that religion put together right and we have this this first council of nicaea uh, which was uh, present-day Turkey around, okay, so 325 AD. And that's where they really um, crystallize a lot of the, the early Christian teachings, the modern Christian teachings. Um, and what they did was they got rid of this idea that, that Christ wasn't, um, let's see here, uh, what did it say? doctrinal orthodoxy blah 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 um basically they define christianity and they they deify christ as something separate from all us sinners you know like christ was the son of god and we're just lowly sinners you know we can't do any better we can never ascend to christ you know consciousness we just have to sin and you know be lowly sinners and pay the church and and you know praise jesus right which is like another, like this thing, like this idea, like you ain't got nothing if you don't, you don't got Jesus. Like it, it's a whole like Southern twang thingy. Um, what does it mean to have Jesus? Like, what does that mean? Is it, does it mean like, um, I don't know. Like, how do you have Jesus? First of all, it's an idea in a book. You have to read the Bible on your own. Like, if you go around saying, praise Jesus. Like, what does it mean? Like have Jesus, you have, how do you have Jesus? right? None of, none of you ever, nobody's met Jesus. Nobody who's alive has met Jesus. You only have the Bible and the Bible's religion. And it's, we know it's religion because it states, you know, we have history books that say um, they put this all together. The men, not Jesus, men who are not Jesus, who are not uh, enlightened beings, they, they created a religion. I mean, it's obvious. So where are you getting like this, the truth from? The Bible is not the truth is what I'm trying to tell you. Even if you strip away the, all the church and you just have the Bible, it's not the word of God because they manipulated the whole thing. They left out whole whole books, entire books, lots of books that, that, that were, and the reason for that is because they contradict the, the, the chosen narrative that Jesus was the, the only son of God and that you have to worship Jesus, and if you worship Jesus, you know, in name, specifically, uh, that means you're going to heaven, which is nonsense, right? Like, and what about all the people who don't know about Jesus? Like, what, are they going to heaven? No, they're not. They've already been to, to heaven, because we know that, because a lot of them are enlightened. We have enlightened people who never follow Jesus, right? They're fully enlightened. They're fully one with God. They are. And that's undeniable. We, I mean, that's it's been, you know, we have testaments to that. So it's like this whole thing, like you have to have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, you're you're going to hell. What is what this is complete nonsense, right? It's just religious. It's just religious. That's all it is. Because here, um, so Ar the council decided against the Arians who were um where who was it? Presbyter Ari, the popular Presbyter Arius, from whom the term Arian controversy comes from, took the second. Okay, um, so uh, let me read that. The purpose of the council was to resolve disagreements in the Church of Alexandria over the nature of Jesus in relationship to the Father. 
in particular whether Jesus was of the same or merely merely of similar substances as God the Father. Well, that, none of that makes any sense. It just shows that they didn't understand Jack, what they were talking about. They didn't understand anything Jesus said, because uh, Jesus spoke the truth. They just misinterpreted it. And that's the whole thing. And if you understand that, like you, you get like people can look at the Bible and have all sorts of crazy interpretations, and they do. And you have a whole wide variety. And so everyone's like, well, this is the truth. This is the word of God. Well, it all really, it entirely, 100% depends on your interpretation and your understanding of what the Bible is saying. So therefore, it's completely uh, up to you to develop your understanding. And therefore, the, the understanding of, of God, of truth, is far more important than uh, the Bible. Because if you understand God, the truth, you don't even need the Bible. You understand it. It's everywhere. The truth is everywhere. It's within us. It's without us. It's everywhere. And Jesus even said that. The kingdom of heaven is within you right? So you don't need any of this stuff. You don't need the Bible. You don't need the church. You don't need Jesus. You know, if it helps you, if it helps you understand the truth, good. But there's so many other people as well who uh, have and still are speaking the truth. There are enlightened beings who are alive today teaching. There are Christ uh, consciousness beings, Buddha consciousness beings who are alive today teaching, right? Uh yeah, I mean, this is ridiculous, whether Jesus was of the same or merely of similar substance as God. We are all the same substance as God, all of us, everything, everything in the universe, you know, everything, without exception. It's all of God. God would not be God if it were, were not everything, right? Uh, so that was the first, and and not only that, not only did they exclude a whole bunch of books that did that contradict it, but... Um, they definitely changed the Bible. They did. The New Testament, especially. Um, the Old Testament is guarded, heavily guarded because it's written in Hebrew and not a, you can't change a single letter. Uh, so it's like, you know, taboo. Uh, and it existed way before the New Testament. Um, but the New Testament was carefully selected by the church to uh, convey a narrative and help and uh, enforce an agenda of this story. It's very storified. It's very magical. It's it's really like it's a chill, child's fairy tale. The whole the whole notion of the, the modern notion of Jesus. And I'm not saying Jesus, the true Christ, was not a um, an enlightened being. I believe he was. But we have other books that the Bible does not ex include, that the Church does not include, that actually um, explain. Um, that detail Jesus' teachings actually far more clearly, like the Gospel of Thomas, for example, is an incredible book. I've read it. You know, this is one of the things I studied, um, which uh, the, the the Bible, uh, the Christian the Christian Bible will, will will not include the Christian religion. And so, how is that? Like the you know, how are they to know? Right? Like three hundred over three hundred years after Christ. They were like, okay, let's figure it out with our, you know, lame, stupid brains. What uh, Jesus was like, you know, like they don't know what was authentic and what wasn't. They can't even figure anything out. They just made up this stupid story. That's ridiculous. And people were like, oh, that's the word of God. It's not the word of God. It's the word of stupid idiots who don't understand anything about truth. And they just wanted to create a religion. It's pure religion, right? And it's obvious as can be. So in any case, I mean... Yeah, just go read some of the other books and other texts, like the, the Thunder Perfect Mind, the Gospel of Thomas. There's probably a whole bunch of other books who that are also not in the, the, the uh, Christian Bible uh, that, that, that really, you know, detail a lot of what Jesus taught and what he stood for, as well as many other things. Mary, um, I, I think there's a book of giants. There's a whole bunch of different teachings out there that will greatly i mean and who's to say like why why do why does the council of nicaea for the roman emperor constantine the roman emperor which by the way the roman emperor remember um hey what did rome do to jesus oh yeah they they crucified him uh it wasn't the jews it was the romans and where did um where did the head of the the church go to oh yeah rome that's that's right that the vatican Oh, yeah. So the people who the Roman Empire who who killed Jesus later became the center of the Christian church. Isn't that interesting? Right. In any case, yeah, I'm sure they can be trusted. 
you know the same people who killed jesus were like oh let's let's uh let's take it over let's take over the christian religion let's make a religion out of jesus and this is the whole thing like just seems like a like some ridiculous movie like is like a good plot right really you know like let's kill the, the the you know the prophet and then make a religion out of him and pretend to you know represent him right it's just like how evil can you get um it's crazy right so so constantine basically created christianity the modern christianity and people are like oh it's god it's god this is the book of god no it's constantine it's the book of constantine the whole thing is constantine that's what it is and some pedophile priests right i mean i'm not a fan of religion i'm not a fan of judaism i'm not a fan of any religion uh just because um it's all about power grabbing and uh, money grabbing and all that right um what else i know i have a bunch of other stuff to say but sometimes things slip my mind um god religion spirituality so jupiter just went retrograde into pisces and neptune's still in pisces so so now is a good time to think about God, religion, and spirituality um, because these two are here. It's also a good time for, you know, um, you know, fantasy and delusion and lies and deception also as drugs and alcohol as well. So, like, don't get sucked into any of that thing, that stuff um, as best you can. You know, turn your mind towards understanding God, spirituality, religion in that in that way you will utilize this energy and that's the whole benefit of astrology is that when you know the the energies you can you can um uh choose to express the the more positive side of all the individual energies and in um instead of unconsciously getting sucked into the negative side right because the negative side of pisces is drugs alcohol illusion delusion fantasy lies deceit deception confusion right you just don't know where you, it's like storification. You're living, it's like Alice in Wonderland, right? Um, the the positive expression of, of Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces is really taking your mind into like more spiritual things, right? The questions, the discovery, that's really important. Don't come at life with answers. Come at life with questions. If you come at life with answers, you know, if, as the Chinese saying goes, um do not be the host be the guest right if you're coming at life with answers you're going to miss you're going to miss discovery you're going to miss learning learning opportunity to <clears throat> figure out new answers questions are far more important than answers because questions keep you learning and growing and discovering and life is about growth it's not about avoiding some hell you know because that doesn't exist hell doesn't i just you know hate to break it to you hell hell does not exist um there is karmic Karmic retribution, which happens here and some in the afterlife before we we're born, you know, there's an interim period, but there's no permanent place of hell where we just stay there forever. There's life does not work like that. We, we karma is, um, you know, um, the form of, of of consequence. It's not punishment. It's not punitive. It's consequences for actions, but it's limited to you know let the punishment fit the crime if anything life is life is incredibly just right life is incredibly fair you only pay the karma for the karma that you accrued right and um you know this whole idea of you know god fearing i'm a god fearing you know christian whatever you don't need to nobody needs to fear god god is not that's not a god does not want us to fear him god does not want us to be like oh i had a little small little insignificant sinner of god and i'm afraid of you and i i'm obeying you that's nonsense that's a childish mentality that's it's ridiculous i mean first of all god's not a person so god's not there's no angry god because god's not a person god's not a being it's not a being god is uh, the you know i don't want to put any descriptors on it it's every god is everything god is not you know we can only talk about what god is not right god is infinite so, and God is the illusion of the finite, right? Nothing is really finite if we get down to it. 
you know, when we take in, when we look into, um, um, you know, me metaphysics, um, there's so much that we're not registering in our five senses. There, there's a whole, whole universe out there that's right here. And, you know, what we consider a firm, you know, matter is made up of space and nothingness and, and the little particles that uh, we, we think we, we are you know, as a physical body don't even exist. They're just energy, right? So it's all perspective. And none of this is real. It's all just a maya, illusion, fantasy, right? So I know there's a bunch of other stuff that I wanted to talk about, but um, yeah, that's that's what happens when you just wing it like I do. I didn't take any notes. I just went for it. And that's, that's how I like to do it. And um, I trust that um, God will uh, have me talk about whatever is important to talk about and won't have me talk about what is not important to talk about, right? So um, that's my little um, spiel on, on God. You know, we don't need, you know, as you grow and evolve, religion is just like, it's an outer shell. It's like a coding. We don't really need it because a lot of what they taught, teach in religion comes from people who are not very evolved themselves. Right. So what are they good for? What, are, you know, what, are, what do they know? Uh, we don't need an intermediary. You don't need a, a guru or a teacher or a priest or a rabbi or a imam or a church or a cathedral or any of that. You don't need any books. You don't need anything. You are complete. The, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is within you. It's within me. It's within all of us. Right. So discover that. Have that be your Bible. Have your 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 living experience be your Bible, because that's the truth, right? And everything serves, if we allow it to, everything serves the growth of consciousness and the return to oneness of God. Right? And the only thing that can keep us from that realization is turning towards. Ego. I know what I wanted to talk about. Evil and the devil and Satan, right? Everyone, you know, a lot of people are getting very afraid these days and they think like, well, it's a battle between good and evil. Well, not really, because um, you know, God is not fighting Satan. I hate to break it to you, God is not fighting Satan. Satan might be fighting God or the idea of Satan, but God is not fighting Satan because God is within, God is everything, and Satan is just like one um illusion fantasy in in uh in within god so i mean it's not like you know we have this idea that um you know satan wants to overcome god it's fantasy it's it's fantasy it's made real by people believing it but you know if you look in the natural world i'm gonna stop sharing for a minute if you look in the natural world you will not find evil anywhere right it, there are no evil rabbits out there. I hate to break it to you. There's no evil deer. There's no evil birds. You know, are wolves evil because they want to, they need to hunt and, and you know, feed their cu cubs and eat themselves? They need to eat as well. Um, no, they're not evil. Lions are not evil either, right? That's a part of natural order. Spiders are not evil. Poisonous snakes are not evil. Right? There's nothing evil in nature. Evil exists solely within the minds of men and women. And you're like, oh, well, what about aliens? Well, okay, so demon, whatever you want to call them, right? These beings, these alternate beings that are humanoid, anyone with a thinking mind who is, you know, obviously dogs do not have a thinking mind. They they have emotions, but they're pre, pre-thought for the most part. They can think rudimentary, you know, and so can some birds and pigs and things like that, whales and dolphins. But they don't have the the cognitive ability that uh, humans do. So, evil is a concept in our brains. It doesn't exist in reality. You know, you take humans or or think, thinking beings. You know, whether you want to include like aliens or demons or whatever you call them. You know, other species that are humanoid. Take them out of the equation. There's no no thing in the universe called evil, right? It doesn't exist. Stars are not evil. Planets are not evil. 
Plants are not evil. Animals are not evil. Bugs are not evil. Mushrooms are not evil. The air is not evil. There are no evil mountains out there. There's no evil wind blowing. There's, there's no evil fish. There's no evil water, right? Nothing is evil. The, the devil doesn't exist as an entity until we create it, right? Because how, wh how, how, what is, what, are, where would the devil be? Like, if it's just, if we have consciousness and consciousness is a constantly evolving thing, um, the only thing that could be considered the devil is um, a, a, some, like a, a, a person, right? You know, a person could be, can, can embody something very, you know, this idea of evil, right? Um, or a being, right? Like you can have humanoid like beings and they could be very, very uh, degraded, right? Degraded, you know, degraded beings, beings who have accrued so much negative karma because they don't follow um, a evolutionary path. They follow a de-evolutionary path, right? And so they're, 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 the being that they inhabit, the body that they inhabit and the consciousness can be very, very heavy, very dark very negative right and then they go around and like you know maybe they kill people or do evil things make people into slaves and then they drink blood and stuff like that horrible stuff right and torture people but that's because of their own thinking their own mind it doesn't exist in in nature it only exists in the realm of the mind so evil is is a product of fear right it's the fear consciousness and if you you know listen to my other talk about fear that is the that is the realm of evil, it is buying into fear, buying into um, the unresolved consciousness, and it is it is that 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 same that same paradigm, um, the paradigm where the thief steals something and he hasn't been caught, and he's in that state of imbalance where he's taking something that doesn't belong to him, and if you keep doing that, keep doing that, you get trapped in a negative downward spiral where you just keep going in that way where you just keep taking and taking and taking right and never giving back enough and then you just become more and more heavy with karma more negative more dark more confused more corrupted right and it's very difficult to climb out of that that that, that path once you once you start to go down there and so those beings they can actually disintegrate into nothing if they don't um um find ways to uh, stay afloat, which unfortunately can involve stealing life force from the living, from the healthy, right? That's part of what they have to do. In any case, um, yeah, so it's not a battle of good versus evil. So, you know, God has no competition. God is one. There's like zero. It doesn't work that way. God is not a being. God is not an entity. God does not have competition from the devil. The devil might think he's, you know, but that's just illusion. That's fantasy. Like this whole thing, like God versus the devil, you know, it's, it's, it's these people who have no concept of the, you know, the truth who think that the devil is somehow in competition with God and it's nonsense. It's doesn't, it's impossible. It's impossible. It can, it's, it's, it, there's no way it could happen. It just, that's not a real, real thing, right? It's fantasy. It's illusion. It's Maya. It's this world that we live in where it's like, oh. <gasps> There's something to be afraid of. And, you know, I'm not saying that fear doesn't have a purpose. Fear has a purpose, has an evolutionary purpose, but it's not, it's not real. It's unevolved, it's undeveloped consciousness. It's that consciousness in the, in the, in the interim state that hasn't fully come to its own realization of what it is, which is full consciousness. So there really, there's not, there, there's no, there's no problems in life and there's no problems in the world. There's no problems in this universe. Really, the problems are 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 made up from a immature mind, and um, you know, once you understand that, that even if you're, you know, part of yourself is involved in that side of things, part of you is just like, no, it's not as real. None of this matters. It's all a game. I'm gonna die soon. We're we're just gonna have some fun. Let's be light about it. Let's do our best, and it's all fine. It's all good, right? We're all gonna die, and that's a good thing because. I don't know, just we get to restart, you know, and we get to take a break and we get to forget and we get to have fun and we get to, you know, things that we didn't do well this lifetime, we can do well next lifetime, right? And, um, and we're here because we choose to be and none of this is punishment, none of this is torture, it's all to grow um, and it's all our choice. 
it's it's all our choice really 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 i mean you know if it's not your choice i suggest if you don't believe that i suggest you become enlightened right away finish this illusion return to god at once and see you know see what happens when you try that you'll quickly realize oh shoot i actually did choose to be here and i want to be here and it's a good thing to understand because it lightens the whole game up you know when you realize it's a game then it's just it becomes a lot more fun so guys that's that's it for this talk for jupiter retrograde and uh pisces bringing up the whole god spirituality religion um stuff topic and that's my little spiel it's not you know i don't i really don't take myself that important or that serious i just like to have fun and talk about what I what I've come to understand and know. So all right. Thanks guys. Bye.